good morning good morning good morning how are you what a lovely day low white cloud as usual very rare to see the sky but uh, been a good day so far thank you now why am I uh, you may have noticed that after absence I've started doing a load of videos and uh, you may say, why is that? Well, the answer is that uh, I tend to do them when I feel like it, and I didn't feel like it, so I didn't do any. So, and on YouTube, it's uh, customary to have some sort of mayor culpa and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't been putting videos up, blah, 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 and I'll promise to do better in the future, but I, I'm not sorry I haven't put videos up. I do them when I feel like it. If you get them, you get them. If you don't, then I'd like and uh, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do any number in the future. I might do another 300,000 and I might do zero. So, but the question is why now? And apart from the fact that, uh, well here's a bit, the fact that I, uh, you know, haven't done it for a while and so, and I did used to quite enjoy chatting to the camera on the way to work. Um, it's mainly because I've got some new video editing software. So I used to use a thing called Sony Vegas. Uh, Sony Vegas Pro and uh, it's a sort of um, it's quite an easy uh, software to use for beginners you know and uh, it's like you know if you want like if you want to do a crossfade you just you just drag the two clips sort of uh, to overlap each other and it automatically puts in a crossfade so which is fine you know and good and has served me very well for a number of years but then um, the way that the their business model works is that they they bring out a new version I think they're on version 16 at the moment and then after a while they sell the old version off cheap so like for example you, you pay like I don't know I don't know 400 quid for the new version and like version 16 and then if you uh, but if you buy version 14 it comes sometimes it just comes bundled for 39 quid or something and obviously for someone who's just doing a very very standard not even hardly HD video blog 20 minutes with no fancy effects no sort of color correction or anything then that is fine you know and the more easy it is to use the better um, but the problem is that um, I don't think they like doing that you know I don't think they like selling the old versions for next to nothing I think they realize that uh, nobody's going to buy the new version because the new version when the new version comes out they say oh no we now have support for 4k 4k uh, pictures and stuff like that and I'm like oh well I don't need that you know if I was in a proper um, uh, if I was a proper video editor then then I might need that but if it's a proper video editor then I would you know I wouldn't be buying the two two uh, years old version of the software so um, they they worry that you know a large part of the market is that there's there they might be able to sell their most recent product to a larger part of the market if they um, didn't sell off the old ones cheap so what they do I think is they sort of nerf the old video editors so and the way they've nerfed the 14 I think is because um, one of the most time-consuming parts of producing a video other than the editing is just preparing it rendering it it has to be completely recoded before it's uploaded to YouTube I don't know why I don't know why but apparently it does you have to just sit there while while something some program goes through the whole video and just stitches it all together in a way that YouTube is happy with and um, this is very very processor intensive it's not uh, it's nothing other than computation and so the faster your computer the quicker it happens and um, the fastest chip in most PCs is the graphics card and so if you can get the graphics card to do the work the computation then because it's multi multiple um, parallel processing then uh, it cuts down on the time drastically well I think although they say well yeah 14 does use the graphics GPU the graphics processing unit for rendering I think that they've nerfed it I don't think it does I think they say that it should do and then they say oh well yeah well perhaps you have got one of these processors which isn't supported but I don't I have a supported processor so I've spent a lot of time trying to uh, work out why uh, 
uh, you know, like a typical 20 minute, one of these typical 20 minute videos takes like an hour and a half to render. And the answer I think is because they don't want, they've, they've taken out some of these high end features out of the, the, the cheaper, out of date, um, for previous versions, which they then uh, remainder, you know, in, in sort of a bucket shop type way. Uh, which is a shame it's a shame for me and I think it's a shame for them because it's a shame for me because they've, they've not really included what they promised that they would include and it's a shame for them because obviously it tarnishes their brand and I'm, I'm a bit pissed off with that and it's a double shame for them because um, that I don't think that way of doing business is supportable anymore you know um, the as as uh, more and more open source software by by open source i mean sort of collaborative anyone can add bits anyone can debug bits um anyone can duplicate it and uh, turn it into um, a slight variation a better variation perhaps of the program and distribute it the, the software is getting very sophisticated now you know i mean it was at one point it was you couldn't buy, uh, no, nobody was giving away a word processor. You know, I suppose the Linux community was a bit more generous in that they had all sorts of stuff that was, you know, they, they pioneered this freeware, um, not free as in free of charge, but free as in free as a bird, freeware software concept. And uh, over the years, of course, it's got fantastically sophisticated and, uh, you know you went through a phase where for example with kitchen design kitchen design always used to be uh, like a like you, the sort of drawings that you get on a technical drawers technical uh, artists uh, uh, two-dimensional illustration you know and then of course the process has got faster and so they bought in 3d and so now everyone was designing their kitchens and their extensions in 3d and nobody wanted a 2d design program so what they did was they just couldn't sell the 2D programs so they just gave them away and you know things that were perfectly adequate a year ago now were available to everybody um, and it's the same really with video design software except that this company called DaVinci has gone one step further and what they want to do is that they are they've got, they've got the problem the old DFO used to have up against the BDA which is it's very difficult to be the second best of anything the second largest you know the second most the second best funded and uh, everyone who's working in video really and seriously at all is using Adobe products Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects and things like that and uh, they've got this fantastic product DaVinci Pro which does pretty much everything that Adobe does but um, what they've done in, in a bold move they've decided to make it um, free free to everybody with the effect of making it the industry standard and by making it the industry standard then effectively anyone who does this for a living is going to going to buy the actual product because I think the actual product is only about three hundred dollars so again it's not massively and it's incredibly uh, I mean it's incredibly sophisticated now the problem with that is that it doesn't have the simplicity of the Sony Vegas so you've got um, you know even things like crossfades you've got to relearn how to do a crossfade and it's not as simple as just dragging the uh, the two clips over each other and you have to literally select a crossfade and drag it on so with, with the increased power comes a slightly uh, different way of working perhaps a slightly less user-friendly way of working but once I think uh, we've made the transition, it, you'll find, funnily enough, the only thing that uh, I haven't investigated yet, when you look at the video, you'll find that we've still got the same uh, fade-ins and fade-outs, because they're fairly easy, and I've managed to put the titles up in the same font, and they're outlined in black, in, like they used to be in the old videos, so some of you may not even have noticed any difference. But the, um, but the, the zoom in where we used to sort of zoom into the titles as they faded out I haven't quite worked out how to do that and that's because DaVinci Pro is in effect is almost like five modules it's five programs and whereas everything was done within the one graphic user interface or GUI on Sony Vegas uh, you have to sort of jump between the various modules to do various bits and some things are sort of a bit counterintuitive 
some things you can do in more than one module some things you have to work out which module does that you know anyway we'll get there so uh, the, the uh, one major difference that I've noticed of course is that it does properly use the, the graphics processor unit for rendering the video so it's now um, I'm rendering like a 23 minute video in 27 minutes or something which is and you can tell it's working because as soon as you click add to the render queue the um, the, the fans come on straight away the fans come on straight away and that's because immediately the GPU and the CPU are maxed out you know the, and so the motherboard thinks hello guys we're we're gonna be doing some serious business here we're gonna need some air cooling quick PDQ and uh, my computer's not massively uh, you know it's not it's not one of the latest it's probably two or three years old but to, to pretty well render in real time 20 minutes in taking 25 minutes is great because that means I can get the thing edited I can get it uploaded to YouTube the same day and and then as far as I'm concerned it's not that it needs to be contemporaneous it's just that it's um, from my workflow point of view I don't want to be thinking right now you know it's 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 Wednesday and I finally finished working on the video that I did on Monday so that's what really stopped me you know it was just uh, Sony Vegas really uh, stood in my way and uh, and uh, now I highly recommend you to um, download DaVinci Pro I downloaded it once before I had a quick look at it decided it was horrendously complicated and I wasn't going to use it but I think now now that I've realized it's you know it's I don't know, there's a hole there sitting on the so um, anyway, um, so now I've decided that uh, it's um, it's for me. I've put the hour, a few hours in just to, and there's plenty of tutorials on the way. And this is only really of interest to anyone who does videos, but especially if you do uh, YouTube and everything, you don't realise how much you have set up. So for example, if you're uploading to YouTube, then YouTube wants a certain pixel aspect ratio and uh, screen size, and um, if you move over to a new program, you have to research, you know, sort of re research all that and just check that you've got it correct and set it all up again but once you've done it and then you've, you've recreated your titles then you have to re-memorize your titles so you don't have to create them every time and oh but anyway it's all done now so we'll see we'll see how quickly I get this up as far as the surgery the um, uh, we last year we've just got our results to the 30th of September 2018 um, I'm pleased to say it's our worst year ever um, we've made a stonking loss um, so we won't have any tax to pay um, although for some reason they still try and charge you a bit of tax even when you've made a loss and that's because you amortize a lot of your expenses and they won't allow you to claim tax relief on expenses you've amortized and so they include those with the profits and so I may have made uh, like a thousand pound profit or something I don't know Anyway, the um, surgery is still a basket case. The accountant came to see me the other day and sort of quite subtly hinted that I might be better off working as an associate somewhere. Uh, he doesn't know me very well, does he? It's not know your customer. That's he's failed on know your customer, isn't he? There. Um, I mean, but obviously he just thinks from a money point of view, doesn't he? He's just they're, that's all they're they're all there about money. They can't understand if you're not doing something that is designed to maximize the pounds, shillings and pence and shekels that you get at the end of the day then they can't understand what, what you're doing and I think he slightly misunderstood because I told him I bought the surgery with the intention of it being profitable but it turned out to be more of a social social enterprise <laughs> non-profit and then uh, he said to me I remember you telling me that you bought this surgery to be a non-profit and I said no actually I didn't that's not actually what I said I said that I want you know this, I'd like the surgery to make a, a big profit but it's, that's just the way it's turned out at the moment but that's because it was so far away from you know the sort of sort of surgery that would make a profit that it's taken me two or three years just to rejig everything and we're not helped you know we're not helped by everyone wants a thousand pounds off your CQC wants a thousand GDC wants a thousand HSE wants a hundred pension people now of uh, one one a thousand. Uh, 
Oh, I've been reported to the pension regulator, by the way, for late payment of my pensions. I employ two part-time staff, <laughs> one whole-time equivalent staff, and they threaten to fine me £400 if I don't bung them the 15 quid or something that I owe them. So, you know, again, that's not helpful, is it? There you go. Got a big tractor pulling out. So we'll uh, let him go. You want to go? Right, there we are. And we're off. See, be nice to people and they'll be nice to you. What goes around comes around. That's what I say. Actually, we've got a very nice junction on the way coming home where um, everybody lets everybody out all the time. Everybody. We've got a lot of industrial estates. We're on an industrial estate, in fact, a school. It's a school estate, but it's a it's an innovation centre, so it's a bit like an industrial estate. And um, about five o'clock, everybody floods off this estate and runs into the traffic uh, coming out of the largest shopping centre in East Kent. And uh, we um, there's a bloke walking on the road there. I'll just make sure everybody knows that he's there. Well, the air's dressed up as a banana, so we're not going to miss him. Yeah, and so and so we're, everyone's courteous, you know. You're like, you, it's almost like they merge in turn, even though they've got to give way from the side roads. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, so um, the um, implantologist is long gone. We're about to start doing implants again. Uh, the receptionist is long gone. Uh, we don't have a receptionist now. We still have a reception, but no receptionist. Um, what else can I tell you? So, so, you know, I mean that again. That didn't help because although I'd only owned the business for two years, I had to pay her like twelve years worth of redundancy. So that was seven thousand pounds up the Swanee. Uh, the uh, the uh, autoclave maintenance people want a thousand pound off you every year. And there's not that many thousands to go round, you know. By the time the staff, they want like tens of thousands off you every year. Um, and then your labs and your um, suppliers want a few more tens of, tens of thousands off you every year. And then as a single-handed practitioner, of course, it's, it's very difficult. It's a shame because when I went along to London and talked to these people about um, how to commission, and how to commission at, at a profit, and what, you know, is the, would provide best value for money for public funds um, my conclusion was that uh, delegating control back to dentists on a granular basis in other words on, a, on an individual basis is probably the best way of, um, of providing the sort of service that they'd like <clears throat> the, uh, the big corporates which was who, you know, you know, the favourite of the previous Chief Dental Officer Barry Cockroft, who did so much to, and then ended up working for a corporate, surprise, surprise, um, are, you know, they're so susceptible to, um, you know, they, they, first of all, they're bought and sold, so, I mean, they're, they're in the aggregation business, aren't they, agglomeration business, they, they are looking to make their money by uh, aggressive uh, purchases of, you know, on the basis that groups are synergistic, there's economies of scale, and so if they can hoover up any surgery that's in the least way profitable, then the network effect means that um, the surgeries become more valuable merely by joining the network. Um, but the network effect is is good for creating value for shareholders, and not so good at delivering the sort of service that uh, is comparable with the service that was delivered in the early 80s, which where you know where. There were far fewer dentists on the register and yet anyone could have an NHS treatment and it was carried out to a high standard. Uh, or, you know, 99.9% .9 was carried out to a high standard. So, the um, corporate uh, model hasn't really suited the Department of Health, I don't think. But they're stuck with it and as I say, they seem to be paralysed now, so... Um, but. What are you going to do now when when uh, single-handed practice and there's so many fixed expenses now that any single-handed practice is struggling and uh, the margin of profitability if not loss then um, the corporates are the only game in town aren't they so that's you know so be it 
you know, that's I always say that they were they they get the national insurance income, the government taxes people, the government makes laws, enacts regulations, formulates contracts, and gets the service that they uh, want and deserve. You know, want as in uh, they can dictate the terms and conditions, and deserve as in if they fuck it up, then they get a fucked up service. And that's what they do. <laughs> that's what, repeatedly, that's what they do. Uh, so I don't, uh, you know, the, the, the poor old patients who suffer, they're the ones who are stuck in the middle. Um, because they don't, you know, they, the patients have no say at the British Dental Association. And the patients have no say at the Department of Health. All, all the decisions about dentistry are made by unelected officials and they can't be forced out of office, even if they are completely incompetent. And um, and the Department of Health and the BDA, there's so much, they're so they're so sort of tightly tied together through various awarding of funds and uh, and BDA support for the Department of Health and Department of Health support for the BDA that basically. Um, the patients, uh, it's a triangle that the patients are squeezed out of, you know. Nobody's, <laughs> BDA is only interested in increasing their membership, making so that they can spend their multi-million pound budget achieving not much. And the Department of Health is only concerned with, for the most part, preventing complaints from MPs. So that they can, uh, they can, uh, they can carry on drawing their salary. Okay, alright, nice to talk to you and uh, I'll see how quick we get this up and uh, I might talk to you tomorrow. Bye.